Taking you to the inn. We? Oui. But you are standing here alone. All alone. You look so pretty. I tried to show off. Oh, that was about 15 minutes ago. Oh. Let's get him under the sled carefully. You're not pretty, you're beautiful. I think he hit his head. Just relax. Let's go. Business picking up. Mm-hmm. Take him over in a jiffy. That'll be all, thank you. You can go, Miss Green. Are you a relative? No, I've never seen him before. Then perhaps I can handle this better alone. As you wish. I thought I might help. I'm Dr. Hunt of Los Angeles. Doctor? Yes. Specialist? General practice. I see. Frankly, you can be of no help. And now, if you'll be so kind as to leave me with my patient. Wait, doesn't the patient have the right to select his own doctor? Naturally. All right, then. Hello, my doctor. Hello. I'm at your mercy. You're the boss. Thank you. Mr. Kirk is an important man, young lady. I intend to call in specialists. For what? Yeah, for what? Perhaps the medical association shall hear about this. What are you going to tell them, that I chose another doctor in preference to you and you want the other one hung? We'll engage your services immediately, doctor, for x-rays. Let me see at the scene of the accident. I noted contusion and a small hematoma of the right posterior parietal region. The absence of bradycardia indicated very little concussion, but take a shot of his head to make sure. Now, there may be a Potts fracture on the left and a crack in the tibia and fibula higher up, so we'll take shots of the whole leg. As soon as you're ready, Doctor. We told him that time, didn't we? Thank you, sir. Thank you. Is there a vacant room adjoining Mr. Kirk's suite? Kirk? One moment, please. Yes, Miss Hunt. Is there a connecting door? Yes, Miss Hunt. Please have my things moved there right away. Yes, Miss Hunt. And have the connecting door unlocked. Miss Hunt. It enough. isn't Miss, it's Doctor. I can only go by the register. 
doctor. I came here for a rest and didn't wish to be on call for practice. Is that all right with you? I beg your pardon? And as a Girl Scout, I won three merit badges, but I don't mention it on hotel registers. Is that all right with you? I'll have your things moved immediately, Miss Doctor. Uh, doctor. Thank you, Mr. Moto. Very funny. Housekeeper. Housekeeper! Doctor. Doctor? Doctor! Just a moment. What's the matter? Uh, I don't feel well. Pulse is good. What seems to be the trouble? I was lonesome. Oh. oh, I see. Mr. Kirk, this case has become very important to me because of the little argument I had with the hotel doctor. It's so important, I'll appreciate hearing about any new symptoms, except loneliness. Good night. You forgot something. What? You didn't take my temperature. Oh, don't be silly. You have no fever. I know this may be annoying to you, but after all, the doctor's first duty is to his patient. Check me, please. But you're wasting your time and mine. I'll bet you $50 against 15 minutes of your time I've got a fever. No fair feeling, is it a bet? It's a bet. I suppose a doctor shouldn't complain about imaginary ailments. They account for half of a year's income. The hotel doctor said you were important. How did he mean? Position? Achievement? Family? Money? Why did you nod so reluctantly? Are you worried about my bill? Mm-mm. Or do you have the feeling that having lots of money isn't being important? I agree with you. Well? Well, it isn't much. 99.6. Well, it's a fever. How about the bet? I own the next 15 minutes. Open your mouth. Why? Open it. Ah. 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 You seem pretty certain about that fever, didn't you? Anybody knows a thing like that. I'd say that throat's been sore for several days. What would you say? Maybe. You had a fever this morning, too, didn't you? Well. I... Open your mouth. <laughs> That was lovely. About as lovely as that bet you made. Why were you out skiing with a sore throat? What should I do? Lie around waiting for it to get well. Exactly. Well, Mr. Sure Thing, better. I have bad news for you. Your x-rays showed there are no fractures whatsoever. What's bad about that? Normally, you could be up and about by tomorrow, but now I'm going to keep you in bed until your throat is cleared. It's a pleasure, as long as you're taking care of me. I happen to be on a vacation. I'll check with you at night, but that's all. But you said my case meant a lot to you. It does, but anything I'm worried about would happen tonight. No, you don't know me. I'm liable to have a relapse three days from now while you're out having the time of your life. How's that going to look in the paper? Patient dies while doctor ski eyes. Isn't even good poetry. Where are you going? Bed. I told you I came here for a rest. But you lost a bet. Remember? Time is yours. Are there many lady doctors? A few. As beautiful as you? No doubt. 
time I've wasted being well. Can you imagine a hospital with nothing but women doctors flitting around from room to room and things like you're wearing? It'd do more business than gone with the wind. How old are you, Mr. Kirk? Why? The last male patient I had who talked like that was 73. Of course, his age was his alibi. I was going to say, finally, that I think you're wonderful. I suppose that's old music to your ears, too. If I say yes, I'm conceited. But that's the answer. May I leave now, please? I'm very tired. Of course. I'm sorry. Well, I'll see you again. Oh, sometime tomorrow. It was very selfish of me to keep you so long. But thank you. And good night. Good night. Uh, uh, doctor. Yes? I still think you're wonderful. And I'm not 73. Good night. something, Doctor? No. Good night. Good night. My doctor. Oh, just a moment, please. Doctor Hunt. Yes? A gentleman to see you. Uh-uh. Thank you. Dr. Hunt. Yes? I'm Mr. Barrows, Peter Kirk's attorney. I see now why my client's been acting so strangely. Strangely? Of course you know Mr. Kirk is able to afford the finest medical care money can buy. I've heard insinuations to that effect. I've checked your record and found that you've been in practice only three years. General practice at that. I'm quite willing to turn the case over to any physician Mr. Kirk may name. But he has already refused to see three of the finest specialists in Los Angeles. Why? Says he has a doctor. Uh, then what am I to do? My client is quite impressionable, Miss... Doctor? All right, doctor. To put it plainly, you appeal to him not as a doctor, but as a woman. How did you decide that? I have eyes, and I know my client. Dr. Hunt. As an ethical member of the medical profession, will you explain to Mr. Kirk that he needs more specialized attention than you were able to provide? No. Why not? Because Mr. Kirk's chief ailment right now is a sore throat. There are no broken bones, his head isn't cracked, and as long as he wants to be my patient, he'll be my patient. Furthermore, lawyer, what's your name? You better stop worrying about your client and consider yourself, because you're an incipient nephritic if I ever saw one. What's that? Well, you'll find out. Aren't you in bed? Well, this is the same as bed, isn't it? No, it isn't. Coffee. What's the matter? Open your mouth. What's the matter? Nothing. Did you talk to Barrows? Who's he? He's Open your mouth. Ah. Ah. Uh, Mr. Barrows is my... Your throat is clearing nicely. You can help by having only liquids today and by gargling with salt water every hour or so. You'll still probably have a temperature, but that's to be expected. 
Apparently, there aren't going to be any after effects from your fall. So if you feel well tomorrow, get up and do anything you darn please. But if your Mr. Barrows decides that your financial position necessitates calling in 18 specialists with long beards, let him call. Because I'm through with this case right now. So you did talk to that him. That has nothing to do with it. You're well, and I have work to do back in town. Won't you stay? I'll be glad to pay you for your full time. That's exactly what I don't like about this case. Mr. Barrows announces that my ability is inferior to your bank book, and you seem to think my services can be bought by someone who doesn't need them. Mr. Kirk, you don't know the reputable practice of medicine, and you don't know me. I apologize. That was stupid. Well, I... I guess I should apologize, too. But I definitely don't like your Mr. Barrows. Forget him. Will you stay? I have to go back, honestly. Goodbye. I'm glad I was able to help you, and... Don't forget the gargle. Goodbye. I won't forget. Speaking. Uh, this is Mr. Kirk. Dr. Hunt just started for Los Angeles in her car. Get her back right away. I've had a relapse. Yes, Mr. Kirk. Uh, jerk. Uh, Kirk. I'll send a car after immediately. Tell her I got up and something went wrong internally. It's very serious. Yes, Mr. Jerk. Uh, Mr. Kirk. And I'll send the house doctor up right away. Keep that veterinarian in his kennel. This is something only Dr. Hunt understands. Get her. Yes, sir. Immediately, sir. What happened? Where's the house doctor? Why isn't he here? He's sick. Are you in pain? Yes. Where? All over. Mr. Kirk, every time I make a decision, I stake my reputation on it completely. Do you understand that? Do you understand the responsibility I assume when I refuse to call in specialists on your case? Can you visualize even half the torture I went through when I received this call, this, this fake emergency call? It wasn't meant that way. What if you had suffered an internal hemorrhage? Where would I be? Where would I be? This is far from funny. I know it. It's tragic, more than you know. What do you mean by that? I brought you back here for a definite reason. Now I'm licked before I start. Start what? Sit down, will you? I think I'll try anyway. Thanks. You have a feeling that someday we'll be married? Well, I didn't say today or tomorrow, but someday. Definitely not. That's why I didn't want you to leave so quickly. I thought you should know that before you go back to town. Well, it's nice of you to tell me before I read it in the papers. I knew it the moment I met you. This is crazy, absolutely crazy. You're not even proposing, you're telling me. I'll propose later, naturally. 
I just wanted you to understand things as I see them before you leave. Is that all? Yes. Except that I love you very much. And I promise to be a faithful, attentive, and considerate husband. May I leave now? If you wish. Kirk, whatever type of women you've known is your business. But I can assure you that this sort of talk doesn't appeal to me at all. If I've done wrong, I apologize. You certainly have. You've made a childish attempt to sweep me off my feet with the most insincere line of emotionalism I've ever heard in my life. I told you I'm in love with you, and I meant it. It might have worked if I were a young girl with a piece of wedding cake under my pillow, but I'm a woman. A mature woman with a coldly clinical mind of a doctor. What do you say to that? What do you say to that? Don't you see? This can't be. Marriage is for women who can create homes for their men and devote their lives to them. I can't do that. I've already signed over my future. I... I have to continue in practice. Sure, I understand. You... You realize that there isn't a moment of my life I can call my own? That my duty to my patients comes first? Even above my duty to a husband? I'm not worried. But... Think what it means, please. Think of being married to a woman who can never be sure the day was her own. Or the night. Think of being at the mercy of calls from patients every hour of every day. You don't want that. Will you marry me? Did you hear what I said? Sure, I heard and I'm still asking, will you, darling? Well... I tried. <laughs> Cheery smile, everybody, and don't forget the congratulations. Congratulations. Thanks. Thank you. Here we are. We are very happy, son. So are we. Well, this is the staff, dear. Moody. Joseph. Doris. Minnie. Eva. Ella. Billings, the caretaker. The grounds look beautiful, Billings. Thank you, Mrs. Kirk. I will have dinner at eight, Ella. Upstairs. Yes, Mr. Kirk. Moody, if you'll get our things out of the car. Immediately, sir. Pardon me, Mrs. Kirk. Your office called. Thank you. And uh, Mr. Vandiver. He seemed very anxious to get in touch with you. Thank you. Let me get our number. I wired my office. Vandermeer, too? Oh, he probably got the number from the office. I'd like to see the rest of the house. Oh, yes, of course. 
Uh, this man who called. Van. He's one of my patients. Van? Short for Vanderbilt. Silly. Is he 73, too? No. A few years older than you. Uh, drawing room. Don't you think we ought to call him and tell him you're married? What difference does that make? This is the biggest place I've ever seen. I'll need a map. I didn't know you had younger men patients. What did you think you were? I'll show you upstairs. Well, it's like another complete home. I like this best. We're having dinner served up here. The master bedroom's here. And over there's a guest room, which you can forget I mentioned. Don't it look romantic? I wonder if there's a moon out. What if there is? Are they supposed to hang out the window and look at it? Now, ladies, please, I'm perfectly able to set up this tray alone. Well, if you're so smart, where is the sugar? I was getting to it. Look at those dames. You'd think it was the first time anybody ever got married. Imagination's a wonderful thing, Joe. Without it, women would wither like prunes. That's beautiful, Billy. It's nauseating. Who put this here? Leave it there, or I'll pin your ears back. A red rose. That stands for love, doesn't it, Billings? How should I know? I don't dream them, I grow them. You should have seen the dinner. They had clear soup and crab salad, and white wine and squab, and tiny fresh peas and red wine, and the littlest hot biscuits you ever saw, with butter pets made like a bride and groom. First time looking at food ever made my heart skip. Moody says they got the phonograph on real low, with nothing but love songs. <laughs> nothing but love songs. Why don't they ring? Oh, why don't they ring? Just thinking of it makes my knees all wobbly. Do you know what's going to happen any minute now? I can guess. When the bell rings, Mr. Moody said, take the coffee and brandy upstairs. And from then on, they're not to be disturbed. Not to be disturbed. Just the two of them up there, and the soft music, and the brandy. Oh. just had an emergency call. She must leave immediately. No. Tonight? Someone is very ill. Tell Joseph to get the car ready right away. Poor Mr. Kirk. Get out! My, my. This is terrible, I know. But Mrs. Roberts is very ill. I have to go to her. You call her your friend and she has a heart attack. 
I'll be back as quickly as possible, dear. Did you order the car? Yes. When Moody brought the coffee and brandy. He stood there staring at me like I was a bride left waiting at the church. I'll bear the scar of this the rest of my life. I warned you that this would happen. And no matter how much we dislike the idea, I have to leave. I'd like to hear you wish me luck. You know I do. Hurry back, honey. It may take most of the night. Oh, come on, smile. I'll be waiting. Darn Mrs. Roberts. Superman. back. I was asleep. Yes. How's Miss Roberts? Oh, all right now. That's good. Just a moment. Just a minute. I'm sorry. After all, he's a patient. Hello? Yes, Ben. Yes, I got your call, but I was busy. Oh, thanks. Oh, <laughs> don't be silly. Why are you calling? Yes? Yes? Yes. Oh, that doesn't sound so bad. You'll live through the night. Then you can drop in at the office tomorrow. Anytime. What? Oh, please, I... I can't talk about it now. Are you satisfied? <laughs> you ought to be shot. Yeah. All right. All right, goodbye, then. So that's the way a doctor speaks to a patient. He has a bad throat. A bad throat? Is that why you laughed? Is that why you couldn't talk in front of me? Is that why you mumbled so your own husband couldn't hear? Does it sound that bad? It was lovely. So lovely, I'm ready to go to the bathroom and cut my throat. What could I say? What would you say if you were a bride with your husband listening and someone asking what was so wonderful about the man you married? It, it was embarrassing. I, I had to mumble. Was that it? Mm-hmm. And now I may as well tell you what you didn't hear. I said you were the finest man I'd ever known. I considered myself a very fortunate woman. 
Darling, I'm a heel. Well, well, you aren't exactly making things easy. My wife, my own wife. Anything else, sir? No. Who was it? No call, just Moody. Good morning. Why don't you wake me? Oh, it was so early. And besides, you look so peaceful. <laughs> you have the funniest snore. It's like a purr. I didn't know I snore. You toss, too. Like a ship in a storm. <laughs> must be revolting. <laughs> Oh, not at all. It makes me feel like an experienced old wife. <laughs> what time is it? 6.45. 6.45? What the world? I have an appendectomy at the hospital. Today? Mm-hmm. Why, what's today? The first day after our marriage? You mean you're going right back to work as though I don't even exist? Oh, don't say that. My patients need attention. Did it occur to you that your husband might appreciate a honeymoon? Even a little one? And so would I, dear. But you can neglect your practice just so long. And don't forget, I've just come back from a vacation. All right, I give up. Is she in a very bad way? Who? The lady with the appendix. The man. A man? Mm-hmm. Mr. Bellows. He's in advertising. You're telling me. With thousands of doctors clamoring for patients, why should a man go out of his way to pick my wife? The answer is that I'm a capable doctor. That's not true. The answer is you're a very attractive woman. And men, from the beginning of time, have been nothing but scheming, treacherous wolves. Thank you. And now, with or without your permission, your inefficient wife is leaving to remove the appendix of a treacherous, scheming wolf. Oh, forgive me, honey. Oh, you're the best doctor in the world, and I'm a jealous fool. Will you forgive me? I shouldn't. Meaning you will. Oh, meaning I love you. Darn it. <laughs> what time do you get in tonight? Around seven. Another dinner upstairs to celebrate the anniversary of the second day? Perfect. Let's see, seven. I'll order it about eight. Oh, no. You stay here. The downstairs is as drafty as a cave. Oh. That kiss was sabotage. I've lost all interest in my work. It could be that I was ill myself. Unable to perform the operation. No. No, my first duty is to Mr. Bellows' appendix. Goodbye, dear. Till tonight.
morning, sir. Hello, Moody. Well, sir, it looks like Mrs. Kirk caught us all napping this morning. <laughs> I beg pardon, sir. I simply meant that Cook was preparing something very nice just when Mrs. Kirk rang for breakfast. Oh. Would you be having breakfast, sir, now that you're up? I'm not having breakfast this morning. None, sir. If I were having breakfast, I'd have had it with Mrs. Kirk. Wouldn't I? Oh, but the doctor... Don't call her doctor. She's Mrs. Kirk. And the general custom is for the man to have breakfast with the wife, if the man is eating. I'm not. Yes, Mr. Kirk. Uh, pardon me, sir. Are you going back to bed? Will you tell me how on earth that possibly could be construed as any of your business? I was thinking about the call, sir. Shall I refer all the doctor, <coughs> uh, Mrs. Kirk's calls to her office, or take messages, or refer some of them to you, sir? Mrs. Kirk's calls are her own. I don't want any part of them. Yes, sir. Although you might let me know if Mr. Vandemer calls again. He's already called, sir. This morning? At uh, six fifteen, sir. The hospital called at six, and Mrs. Kirk's assistant at six five. Was he ill? Oh, she's a lady, sir. I mean Vandemer. I don't know, sir. He seemed frightfully cheery for that hour. What do you want? I never listen in, sir. Probably an appointment with the doctor. He already has one. No, really, sir? Hmm. What do you mean by that? By what, sir? Oh, never mind. Moody, do you realize you've irritated me continuously ever since you came into this room? I beg your pardon, sir. But actually, it's the early hour. You're not used to it. I seriously recommend that you go back to bed, sir. I seriously recommend that you get out of here. Vandermeer and those men, I don't know what they think they are. Yes? I'm there. I'm the doctor's husband. I'm glad to know you, Mr. Uh, Kirk. Oh, of course, Mr. Kirk. I'll tell Dr. Hunter here. No, 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 don't, don't disturb her. I'll wait. Mm -hmm. She seems pretty busy. Yes. There hasn't been a moment's rest since she came back from surgery. Has um, Van been in yet? Mr. Vandermeer? No. Uh, when's his appointment? Let's see. No, apparently there's nothing definite. Maybe she just intends to sandwich him in. Could I see the appointment list? Oh, well, I... Perhaps I could uh, sandwich myself in, too, for luncheon. <laughs> well, certainly. Maybe I can just wedge myself in between Mr. McCarthy and Mr. McKee. <laughs> Quite a lot of men patients. Yeah, you know men. They have to be babied for the least little thing. Is this Mr. Andrews in there now? Uh, Mr. Robert Andrews? Yes. Do you know him? Oily? Beg pardon? That's Mr. Andrews' nickname, Oily Andrews. He's quite a fellow. To hear him tell it, yeah. Would it be all right if I went in her private office? Why, certainly. Care for a magazine? No, thanks. <laughs> the doctor may be some time. Should I let her know? Finger? Why? I think a more appropriate question is what's wrong with you? Since when does a man with a broken finger have to strip to the waist? Peter, I suggest you wait outside until I've finished with Mr. Andrews. I ask a sensible question, I want a sensible answer. That moron's been showing off what he thinks is a fine physique since he was 17 years old. What's the matter? Are you afraid your wife will realize how you should look? Please. Peter, get out of here this minute. Let him go. I can knock him down with a broken finger. Yeah, try it. 
all, Emma. Leave us alone, please. You sit right where you are until I come back. Do you understand? Do you understand? Yes. Apparently, you've known my husband for some time. Yes. He always did have a touch of jealousy. I want to apologize for his actions. Accepted. And suggest you engage another physician. Don't you want to take care of me? Frankly, no. In view of what's happened, we'd better call it quits while you're still in pretty good health. <laughs> well, if you wish. Do you mean you're going to let a jealous husband drive away all the patients he doesn't like? I'll handle this however I see fit, Mr. Andrews. Goodbye. Goodbye. May I explain something? If you think it's possible. Orly Andrews from the day he was born has been nothing but an out-and-out -out exhibitionist. What a thrilling thought for a doctor. He had his shirt off, didn't he? How did you know that before you broke in? I guessed it. Besides, I know Orly. Then why couldn't you have guessed that the man had been thrown from a horse and besides a broken finger had abrasions on his back? He did. Peter, this is very serious. You've broken into my private examination room and threatened to exterminate a patient. You've caused such a scene, I've had to ask the patient to get another doctor. Why did you come here? To ask you to lunch. And when you learned I was with Mr. Andrews, you broke in. Was that because you don't trust me? I don't trust Oily. Well, forget him. If you're going to start looking under rugs in my office, I'd like to know it now. I trust you completely. Please don't judge me by what I did today. I know how much your work means to you, and I know that I have no right to intrude. It's just up to me to control my selfishness. I promise I will. Will you forgive me? Well, Please. Oh, of course. I never did like Oily anyway. Honey, you're wonderful. Can I take you to lunch? I can't make it. I have to get back at the hospital. I'll be waiting for you at home, then. Yes, and I better hurry. There are several patients waiting outside. Tonight. Right. Bye. Bye. toes this morning, sir? Yes. Did you enjoy your breakfast, sir? Fine. Oh, by the way, Mrs. Kirk and I are having dinner out tonight. Very well, sir. Shall I call you at any particular time, sir? Call me? Aren't you going back to bed, sir? Didn't you ask me that yesterday? Uh, yes, sir, but... And what did I say? You ordered me out, sir. Need I go on? Mr. Kirk, what you doing up, sir? Good morning, Pierre. Where are all the golfers? Sleep, I guess. You mean I can't get a game? Well, sir, I'd say yes and no. Meaning what, Pierre? Meaning if you're anxious to play regardless. It is always Mr. Kekel. Uh-oh. Yeah! Any of the golfers show up yet? Mr. Kirk is hooked. Mm -hmm. Well, Peter Kirk, congratulations, old man. Oh, Kekel, thanks. <laughs> Where's the bride? On her honeymoon? <laughs> No, she's working. That's the idea. Train them before they start talking back. How about a game? Well, fine. Five bucks a hole, a dollar stroke, fifteen dollar NASA. Tell me, how's the bride? Fine. <laughs> I've heard about her. She must be just what the patient ordered. <laughs> What'd you hear? Well, Pete, if the boys aren't lying, you better get a bottle of dander from Uber. For what? To get that Vandermeer out of your hair. <laughs> Oh, you mean Van? Yeah, do you know? <laughs> no, not exactly. Well, this is a screwy world. Here, you haven't even mentioned the girl, and Vandermeer's been raving about her for months. 
And when that wolf raves, it's something. Because he's been on the trail ever since he's been able to walk. <laughs> What kind of looking fellow is he? Well, we'll say if Flash Gordon was just a little gray at the temples. If that guy was anywhere near my wife, I'd lock her in the closet and swallow the key. <laughs> no, that type of fellow doesn't bother me any. I'm not worried. <laughs> You're not worried, huh? <laughs> well, is that the way you always wear your pants? Oh! <laughs> <laughs> what did you do today? Nothing much, a little golf. How's... how's business? <laughs> business? Oh, as usual. Many customers? You mean patients. About the same. Did Vandermeer come in today? No. Why? Well, I was just wondering. Is he what you'd call nice looking? I guess so. Do you know him very well? What did you hear today? Nothing. Oh, you've heard something, obviously. I'd better set you straight. Before I met you, Van asked me to marry him, and I said no. That's that, and that's all. You went that far? What do you mean? What's wrong with him? I mean, what are you treating him for? A fractured sacrum. Oh, well, how did it happen? He was skiing. Don't tell me he fell practically at your feet. He did. I thought I was being original. He had a multiple Greenwood fracture, which requires several months of heat treatment. That's the only reason I still see him. I'm sorry. You know what's wrong with me? Uh-huh. That jealousy again. Yes. You're jealous of the man I refused to marry, and you're the man I married. I know it's silly. Anyway, I feel better now. And so do I. You haven't told me where we're going tonight. Tony's. I hope you like it. I know I will. Um, one more question. Far away. Where's that place Vandermeer was hurt, the sacrum? The sacrum is between the lumbar and the coccygeal regions. Where's that? Um, back here. Let's go. It is! Sorry, I can't rumba. Oh, that's all right. I can teach you at home. It's a lovely rhythm, isn't it? Helen! Hello! Who's that? Um, Vandermeer. Where? Dancing with the blonde and white. Peter, your mouth is open. How can he dance with a fractured sacrum? Oh, it's almost well. well. If it's almost well, why do you still have to... to treat him? Pardon me, dear, but I had to repeat my congratulations in person. Thanks, Van. If I'd seen you before, I'd have come right over. Uh, Mr. Vandeveer, my husband, Peter Kirk. Congratulations, old man. How are you? How are you? I'd say that's up to the doctor to decide, eh, Helen? Sit down, old man. Sit down. Honestly, Helen, this news was a surprise of my life, out of an absolutely clear sky. Here I was, leading a dull and normal life, waiting for you to return, with no hint of the future. I haven't thought in the world about what might be happening up there in the snow. Why, only yesterday I was talking to Batty Perkins about the party he's throwing Saturday night, and I guaranteed I'd have you on hand, bright and chipper as a canary. I had no idea, positively no... Uh, well, it uh, was rather sudden. <laughs> sudden? <laughs> well, I actually had theater tickets for the night you were to return. And that morning when I picked up the paper... 
Have you uh, known him long? Long? Oh, <laughs> long enough. <laughs> <laughs> That's one for the book, Kirk. I asked your bride if she's known you long, and she says, long enough. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I didn't mean it that way at all. Of course you didn't. Can't a poor old bachelor have his joke? I'm resigned to the inevitable, Helen. Just a purely professional appointment now and then for bare consolation. I beg your pardon. Pardon me. That's quite all right. Excuse us, Ben. My husband and I requested this number, and we'd better dance. Oh, certainly. I congratulate you again, and uh, I'll see you tomorrow. Goodbye, Kirk. Lucky dog. Thanks. Privilege of man. Uh, no offense. A kiss for the bride. Peter! Are you all right? What happened? If you'd care to come outside, I'll give you my version of what's going to happen. Now you're talking. Here, Take it easy. Please. 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 Wait a minute. Take it down. Wait a minute. Please. 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 Stop! Please. I'll have to ask you to accept our apologies. As you wish. Oh. Is it your back again? Yeah. We'll check tomorrow. What time? At two. I'll see you then. Please take me home. I don't suppose there's anything I can say. Absolutely nothing. Check, sir. Thank you. going in the guest room. I'm sleeping there tonight. May I say something? May I say it for you? We've been married four days and you violated every rule in existence as to how to treat a wife. It was Vandermeer I tripped, not you. Oh, so you did trip him deliberately, just as you deliberately spied upon me and broke into my office. Oh, you mean oily. Yes, oily. What are you trying to do, insult all my patients to the point where I'll be driven out of practice? Who do you think you are, Murder Incorporated? I have no defense except that I'm madly in love with the woman I married. Everything I've done can be traced directly to that fact. But this can't go on, this terrible suspicion and jealousy. Please give me another chance. I'll get over it honestly. Oh, I don't know. I haven't had a quiet moment since you put this ring on my finger. Please, honey. Go sit down. Let me think. Anything you say. arguing before we even know each other. With as much chance for happiness as two ducks in the desert. But I'm as big a fool as you are. And I've no use being silly alone. Will you be home for dinner? I hope so. You have Mr. Vandermeer at 2 o'clock. Yes. Well, I mentioned it just in case you'd forgotten. Oh. Hope he's all right. So do I. Will you convey my apologies again? If you wish. What? Did I say anything? Yes, you said dum de dum two o'clock. Did I? Oh, I must have been thinking of something. You're acting very strangely this morning. I shouldn't be. I'm the happiest man in the world. Oh, your mind's a million miles away. My mind's on you. That's why I'm happy. It's 
It's much nicer this way, isn't it? No silly jealousies cropping up. I love you, honey. At any hour you can aim, I'll be thinking of you. Ten o'clock, twelve, two. Remember that in your office. Here at home, there's a husband who's thinking of you every hour of the day. Twelve o'clock, one, two. You're worrying about nothing, dear. Me worrying? All right, I'll be thinking about you. At twelve, one, and two. Darling. I'll have to hurry. Can I drive you to the office? Oh, no, thank you, darling. I'll see you tonight. Thank you. Maybe you'd like these for your office, Mrs. Kirk. Oh, they're beautiful. Thank you, ma'am. Mm. Billings, is Mr. Kirk at all interested in gardening? Not that I know, ma'am. It'd be a worthwhile hobby for a man, wouldn't it? Of course, it's better to get paid for it. <laughs> do you care if Mr. Kirk putters around a little? It's his property, ma'am. We... Billings, do a favor for me. Certainly, ma'am. Try to get Mr. Kirk interested in gardening as a hobby. Well, uh, how do you go about it, huh? Oh, make it sound worthwhile to him. You have intelligence, Billings. I'm sure he needs something like that to occupy him during the day. Yes, well, I'll do my best, ma'am. Thank you. Oh, uh, this is our secret, naturally. Yes, ma'am. Good afternoon, sir. Oh, hello, Billings. Wonderful day, like spring. Spring? Mm. Have you ever thought of gardening as a hobby, sir? Who brought that on? Sometimes I get a feeling, sir, that deep inside you're a man of the soil. I? Consider the ground, sir. What? The earth is a flirtatious woman. By her whims, man lives or dies. She feeds or she starves brings fortune or despair. And at the end, she takes all men alike to her bosom. All men alike. All men alike. It's a wonderful thing, sir, sir, trying to outguess her. Take that tree over there. Last year, it had 53 peaches. This year, only six. Why, sir? Why? Well, here's my answer. Somewhere, there was a, another tree last year had six peaches, and this year has 53. The earth is a woman. She loves one man today, another tomorrow. You think she'd appreciate having these flowers as decoration. But no. Again, she proves she's a woman at heart by showing a preference for weeds. Phantom. Sir? Where would man be if he didn't trust your buildings? Where would he be if he didn't plant his little seeds of faith and hope? Gone like the dodo. Right. All he can do is place his faith and pray. That's it, sir. You caught the feel of it perfect. Have I? May I shake your hand, Billings? Yes, sir. You've helped me through a crisis, the greatest crisis of my life. Effective immediately, I'm increasing your wages $10 a month. Thank you, sir. I'm going in the house. It's 2 o'clock. I'm going upstairs without any despair or worry and sleep like a baby. Yes, sir. Uh, when would you like to start? Start? It's over. I've won. I've won. I don't know what I did, but it must have been good. Oh, dear. Look.
look at me. You look fine. I've won a battle. What battle? With myself. I'll be honest, honey. When you left this morning, I was raging inside with jealousy, imagining weird, crazy things about you and Vandermeer. For a while, I even thought of going to the office and throwing Vandermeer out bodily. But I fought this battle with myself, and I won. You're not jealous anymore? No. You won't imagine things? Never. I've changed completely. Well, I'm certainly glad to hear that, because I didn't see Vandermeer this afternoon. You didn't see him? Mm -mm. I'm going to his house tonight. Tonight? Mm -hmm. He's ill, too ill to leave his house. Well, I was supposed to go there straight from the office, but I wanted to see you first, even if it's only for a few minutes. But, but Vandermeer's house at night. Is this the change, Mr. Kirk, talking? I'm sorry. Oh, now listen, dear. You fought a battle and you've won. That's fine and I'm proud of you. Make me stay proud of you. I have to go. I'll carry your bag to the car. That's the way to talk. It was a wonderful day, wasn't it? I didn't see much of it. Like spring. And the moon's out tonight. It's romantic, isn't it? You're happy, honestly. I've never been happier. Oh, I want so much for our marriage to be a success. Above all else, that must be. Will be, darling. Oh, I'll hurry back. Well, take your time, dear. I won't worry. Not an hour. Forty-five minutes. I'll see you then. Has she gone, sir? Again? Yeah, she had an emergency call. Dear me. And dinner, sir? Mrs. Kirk will be back by eight. She's only gone to Vandermeer's. Mr. Vandermeer? Why do you say it that way? It was a surprise, sir. I happened to see Mr. Vandermeer's cook at the market this morning, and she remarked that Mr. Vandermeer was in excellent health. She did? Uh, was it an accident, sir? No. It's probably the flu. They say it hits you like a thunderbolt. Yes, sir. Oh, what are you waiting for? Beg your pardon, sir. Ah, good evening, Doctor. Huh? Hello, Frederick. Why all the cars outside? Cars, Doctor? Yes, cars. I don't know, Doctor. Up this way, Doctor. Isn't Mr. Vandermeer upstairs? Hello. I've been waiting. You said you were ill. How else could I have induced you to come here? Then, of all the childish... Wait. nice of you. Well, come on in, have a drink. I will, as soon as I get my breath. I don't understand. You don't expect me to stay here without my husband, do you? Of course I don't. Frederick's calling in now. Oh. If I'd asked you both to come over together, you would have suspected something. Well, I didn't do so badly as it was. <laughs> that was my fault. You know, this is quite a gesture on your part, Van. After all, you must have at least a vague idea how Peter feels about you. Oh, we were both a bit childish last night. I hope he and I will be very good friends before the evening's over. I know you will. Now let's get ready to greet the groom in the proper spirit. but it's good. Will you dance while we wait? Uh-huh.
What happened? A man peeping through the window. A man with horns. There's nothing to it. I saw him right outside that. There he is! Peter! Oh. Stay where you are. Peter, stop! You're coming with me. Will you listen to me? And as for the rest of you and your host, you're a dirty bunch of tramps. Oh! You've gone crazy? Where's your car? There! Peter, Kurt, will you listen to me? Get in. You followed me tonight. You followed me and spied on me. After what I've seen, you have the nerve to accuse me? If you hadn't rushed out of the house tonight to be a common peeping Tom, you would have been invited here. And you would have found out, as I found out, that those people you called dirty tramps and the man you knocked for a loop were giving a surprise party for us. Surprise party? Yes, for us. And now I can't even face them. Oh, now you get in. Holy Moses. Take off those antlers before somebody takes a shot at you. Can you offer any explanation of your conduct tonight that would be accepted outside an insane asylum? No. Can you give me one logical reason why I should continue to put up with this nightmarish game of peekaboo? No. Stop fiddling. From the day we married, you've been a one-man Gestapo. You've questioned my every move. You spied upon me so much, I'm afraid to look down a patient's throat without asking your permission. Yes, I know. I haven't bothered you quite a bit. But this, to have so little faith in my character as to humiliate us both like you did tonight. It's not you. I don't trust men. Oh, so you dragged me out of the house. Oh, it was a mistake. Of course it was a mistake, and so is the way you've chosen to live your life. Oh, Peter, must you be without purpose or ambition just because you have money? Don't you want to do anything worthwhile? You talk as though having money is a crime. It is when you choose to occupy your idle talents in destroying our happiness. And you're succeeding beautifully. Honey, there wouldn't be any trouble if you weren't away so much. If you just agree that there's no need for you to work. We've discussed that. You know what my work means to me. I thought maybe... Maybe what? That I throw aside something I can do that's worthwhile and join you in doing nothing? No, thanks. I have to have a reason for being on Earth. I'm sorry. Much as I love you, Peter, we, we can't go on like this. But I'm in no mood to make a calm decision tonight. We'd better leave that till morning. Good night. Wait. I said good night, and tonight I don't mean perhaps. Good morning, madam. Is everything ready? Yes, Mrs. Kerr. Um, Mr. Kirk will be out in a moment. You may leave now. Be good, madam. Peter. Yes, Mrs. Kirk? Have you seen Mr. Kirk? He's gone. But, madam, you said... Never mind what I said. Have you seen him? You mean this morning? Yes, this morning. No, madam. Kirk returned yet? He hasn't? No, there's nothing to be worried about, but 
Be sure and have him call me as soon as he comes home. Thank you. Mr. Delaney's waiting. All right, show him in. What's the matter? I've been worried about you all morning. Nothing. Oh, what's the use of lying? I, I tried to turn my husband into a saint overnight, and he walked out on me, and I'm going crazy. Now you know. Yes, now I know. He misunderstood something that happened last night and caused a scene. You couldn't blame him, actually. I'd misunderstood it first, too. But I can't let him know how I feel because he's gone. Lady, at last you're a wife. Should I have Delaney wait while you cry yourself out? Who's crying? Have him come in. All right, Mr. Delaney. You can step in the other office. Oh, thank you. How do you do, doctor? Good morning. We'll look at the hand here. Do you have a cold? Cold? No. Was there much pain last night? Uh, just a little. In my feet. Feet? Just they sort of tickle down the bottom. That has nothing to do with this. Mr. Kirk just called. Why didn't you put me on? I want to talk to him. Where is he? He couldn't wait. He was busy. Where is he? That's what I'm trying to tell you. You're to meet him in Hill's department store, counter seven, main floor, and uh, you asked for Mr. Jenkins. Who's Mr. Jenkins? How should I know? Oh, he could have spared one minute to talk to me. Just one minute. Well, Emma, don't stand there. Help me. Oh, if I ever get my hands on him. Are you leaving, doctor? What about me? Emma, put a new dressing on his hand. Sure. Oh, what shall I tell Mrs. Snyder? You have Mrs. Snyder at 12.30. Oh, hang Mrs. Snyder. Hello, Mrs. Snyder. Pardon me, is this counter seven? Yes, ma'am. Is there a Mr. Jenkins here? Yeah, but he's out to lunch. Oh. Oh, honey. Peter Kirk, I could... Look. Thank you, Sadie. You're welcome, Mr. Jenkins. So you're Mr. Jenkins. Madam, if you can... And you're working. 2250 a week in time and a half for overtime. Oh. May I help you, madam? But no, thanks. Just looking. I don't mean to believe it. Mr. Jenkins, you're wonderful. Am I? I mean it. It wouldn't make any difference if you were digging ditches or selling potato peelers. To see you making yourself actually useful is the greatest thrill I've ever had. You were so right last night. This is all I needed. The feeling that work gives you. That, that you're important enough to be paid for doing something. It makes you want to do more, to better yourself. Already I've been complimented by the head of the department. Oh. It's quite a feeling. Oh, darling. Yes, sir. Are these the 59-cent ties you advertised? Yes, madam. They're terrible. Well, not to everyone. Or perhaps to a woman with exceptional taste. May I show you something else? All right. Have you found out yet? Is it him? Of course it's him. And that woman standing there is his wife. Don't you remember the picture in the paper? Her looking down his throat and him saying, ah? Yeah, that's right. Peter Kirk. He's got 10 million bucks if he's got a cent. You're no good millionaire. Boy, this is right up my alley. Notice the quality of the red stripe, not blaring out as an individual bar, but blending softly and easily with the blue. Mm-hmm. This tie sells for five dollars. Five dollars? New York or Chicago, not here. During our sale, you may have this for two thirty-nine. An imported tire we absolutely can't replace in stock. Well, uh, would you wrap it as a gift? Certainly, madam. Two thirty-nine, eight cents sales tax is two forty-seven. If you'll take this to counter fifteen in the rear, they'll be more than happy to wrap it as a distinctive present. Thank you. Thank you, madam. How's that? Wonderful. Honey, about last night. Oh, forget last night. Today is a new start, and I'm going wacky over a handsome young tie salesman named Mr. Jenkins. You mean everything's all right? Oh, I'm no fool. Do you think I want to lose a man with the future you've got? Well, this is only the beginning. If you can sell a necktie, you can sell a piano. If you can sell a piano, you can sell anything. Mr. Jenkins, you're a man who's going places, and doggone it, I'm going with you. Oh, darling. I'll see you tonight. 
you've got lipstick. <sighs> that was my wife. You know how wives are. <laughs> From the looks of you, I'd say you found him. Yeah. What's the idea? Emma, for the past three years, you've been wanting to visit your folks back east. Well, go ahead, because I'm giving you your notice right now. I'm fired? Uh-huh. With a month's extra pay and the best recommendation anyone ever had. Oh, you won't have any trouble. Dr. Smith wants you, Agert Martin. You can work for any of them at the drop of a hat. But what goes on? I'm in love with my husband, that's what. Oh, Emma, until you've seen him sell a necktie, you haven't lived. He's terrific. You mean he's working? Like mad. With his money? What's money when a man by his own ability is going to be running Hill's department store within a year? But he could buy the blame thing today. Of course he could. But what I've been hoping for has happened. He's finding himself. And now that he's started, nothing can stop him. A millionaire selling neckties. It's ridiculous. Sure it is. All miracles are ridiculous. That's why they're wonderful. So? So that leaves the next move up to me, and I'm ready. As of today, I'm retiring from practice to become Mrs. Peter Kirk, housewife. Well, I'll be darned. And not halfway, either. We'll get rid of that big house and move into a one-room apartment with a pulled-down bed and a geranium on the sill. I don't know why, but I can actually see it. Oh. oh. <laughs> Thanks. Oh, you know, Emma, I had the wrong slant on marriage. You can't ask. You have to give. That's what I'll give him. My chance for success in the career of medicine. Freely and gladly. In exchange for a husband with pride and 20 bucks a week. $22.50. Oh, gosh, I feel good. Wow. You even sound good. Come on, help me clean out the joint. Losing my job and liking it. <laughs> I'm an idiot. Mr. Marshall wants to see you. Marshall? General manager, seventh floor. Immediately, I'll take over. Promoted already. Young man's success has no secret. Hard work and the realization of every opportunity will lead you unhesitatingly to the very pinnacles of achievement. It will? You set for me, sir? Yes. Mr. Greener, Miss Moran, Mr. Blemish. Hello. Sit down, please. Your employment card lists you as John Jenkins. Is that correct? No, sir. Well, what is your name? Peter Kirk, sir. You stated you've had five years' experience as a sales clerk in New York. Is that correct? I lied, sir. To be fair, Mr. Kirk, I must tell you, I have already received a report commending your work from the head of your department. Thank you, sir. But we also have a complaint from a committee representing our employees. Why? What have I done? May I speak, sir? Go ahead, Blemish. Kirk, I represent the employees of this store that must work and earn a salary to feed themselves and their families. Our jobs are our lives. Somewhere in this city is one of us who's been deprived of his rightful place, whose family at this moment may be without food because you, a millionaire, have deliberately stolen his job. I didn't steal anybody's job. They hired other people besides me. There's considerable logic in their argument. Do you have anything to say? Well, to tell the truth, I never thought of cutting some poor fellow out of a job. If it's like the employees' committee here seem to think that I was selling neckties just for the fun of it, I'd get out right now and, without an argument, let somebody else move in. But the most important thing in my life right now is to hold on to this job. Are you trying to tell us you're broke? I didn't say that. I said I have to keep this job, and I do. I need it for my happiness. I need it for a million and one personal reasons I can't talk about. All I ask is you treat me just as you would any other employee in the store. Pay me if I do my work well and fire me if I don't. This is a free country, isn't it? Why should a few million dollars keep me from having the same opportunities as anyone else? What you said sounds right, but it must be wrong. Mr. Marshall, he refuses to argue his case openly and above board. He classifies the defense as something personal and private. He hasn't given a single reason why he shouldn't be dismissed immediately. And as the head of the committee representing all of your employees, I request that you make room for a deserving and needy worker by removing him. Mr. Kirk, my distasteful duty in a difficult situation is to order you discharged with additional salary, which will compensate for the usual notice. All right, sir. 
You mentioned that someone gave me a good report. Could I have a recommendation that I might try for another job? You mean take it away from some other poor fellow? Kirk, I promise you that when we get through publicizing your case, there won't be a company in the United States willing to hire you. Well, I guess you're doing what you think is right. No, thanks. Whatever I have coming, I'd like to turn over to the employees fund. Anything wrong, sir? Wrong? The world is absolutely nuts. I wouldn't argue that point, sir. Here I am, an able-bodied man, and I want to work. Is there anything wrong with that? No, sir. So today I got a job, and I did my work well, and for the first time in my life, I felt like a good, substantial citizen. Then they fired me. They tell you why, sir? Because I don't need the money. Nobody gives a hoot whether I need the work. I don't need the money. You mean you need the work to, to sort of round out your life? It is my life. That job did everything for me. It changed my whole outlook. Made me ambitious. It gave me a reason for being on Earth. Saved my marriage. Oh, I've lost it. I see, see. What can I do? I have to work and they won't let me. I might as well be a man without a country. I know what I'd do, sir. What? I mean, if I had the money, I'd admit that whoever fired me was right. I'd decide that a man on my bankroll shouldn't be taking jobs, I should be making them. And if I got busy doing something about it, I'd wind up being about the most useful and satisfied man in the world. Billings, from the bottom of my heart, I thank you. You're welcome, sir. For a bit there, I thought I'd overstepped my bound. I want you to deliver a message to Mrs. Kirk when she comes home tonight. Tell her that even though I failed this first time, she mustn't lose faith in me. Tell her the next time she sees me, I'll be a man again with my place in the world. You're going away, sir? You started me right, but whatever I do, it has to be worked out without any help from anyone. Goodbye, Billings, and thanks again. Oh, pardon me, sir. Well, good luck, Emma. It's been great having you with me. It's the best job I ever had, and the best boss. But you were right to quit your practice, and I know you won't regret it. You ought to get your evening Herald paper. Goodbye. Get your evening Herald paper. Thank you. Herald, get your evening Herald paper. Evening Herald paper. Get your evening Herald paper. Thank you. Hello. Blue convertible. Thank you. Good evening, miss. Uh, we're from the Herald. Yes? This way, lady. What's the idea of this? It's a poll of the people on the street about the Peter Kirk case. Peter Kirk? The idea is they fired him because he was keeping some poor man out of a job. You mean they won't let him work? Well, employee organizations all over the country are considering resolutions against hiring him. It looks like he's going to be a national issue, the way this thing is catching on. Secretary of Labor will probably issue a statement tomorrow. But this is insane. That's what we want. Your opinion as to whether he should be permitted to work or not. Of course he should. Any man has that right, whether he's rich or poor. Well, you're the first one that's been for him. Well, you've just been talking to the wrong people. Well, the wrong people are always right. Uh, what's your name, please? Hey, wait. Hey. Who was that? I don't know. I'm new here. Yes, this is Dr. Hunt. My husband? Who's this? Central Hospital? I'll be right over. Uh, uh, what's the matter with him? Hello? Hello? Oh. I'm Dr. Hunt. Oh, yes, Doctor. Oh. Dr. Hunt for Mr. Peter Kirk. First door to your right, Doctor. Hello, dear. Uh, Dr. Hunt, Mr. Decker. How do you do? Uh, if you'll excuse us for a few minutes, Mr. Decker. Yes, with pleasure. 
So this is another of your fake calls. Isn't it enough that you left me again without a word of explanation? That I haven't heard anything from you in four days? Why must you add to the torture by pretending to be on your deathbed? Oh, I pretended nothing. Mr. Decker's secretary called to have you meet me here. What if you were fired from your job? We're man and wife. We could have worked things out together. That's what we're going to do. What do you think of this hospital? Oh, what in the world's that got to do with us? Plenty. We're buying it. Buying it? It's a good hospital, isn't it? Yes, but it's practically bankrupt. It's on the verge of shutting down right now. That's why we're buying it. After the purchase of the hospital, my yearly income will be $573,000. Last year, the hospital lost $400,000. This year, it should lose $550,000. That still leaves money enough for charity work and for us to live on. Man, will I be busy. You mean you're going to run it? Well, only the management and business details. Well, I want to interfere with your work. My work? As chief of staff. Lady, will you be busy? Am I hearing right? Are you throwing every penny of your income into this hospital knowing you'll get nothing for it? What do you mean, nothing? I'll be helping the sick. I'll be providing work for nurses, doctors. Interns. People I don't even know about. Every time I think about it, I get so choked up I can't breathe. You should see the people here. The kids especially. Yeah, with paralysis, broken bones, oh, pneumonia. we'll make them well or we'll die trying. You sound as excited as I am. Do you know what's going to happen? You can't start something like this without spending your last penny. Why, we'll be living in a one-room apartment with a pulled-down bed. We'll be saving our nickels for one night a week at the corner movie. Why, a spaghetti dinner out will be the event of the month. And do you know how often we'll be able to go dancing at the Grove? Oh, Peter, you're crazy. Isn't it wonderful to be like this? To get an idea and grab only man? Yeah, champagne without the hangover. That's right. What a life. And here I've been trying to persuade you to quit work, and now I'm in it after my... Oh, so you admit it was a deliberate plot on your part to put me out of practice. No more deliberate than you're trying to make me realize what a chump I was. All right, we're even. I want to show you around. There's a kid in 219 we ought to adopt. You mean if we get too busy for... If we get too busy... Right. <laughs>